His father died soon after his birth. He was bitten by a snake as a boy. As a young man, he permanently damaged his health after practicing an austere form of asceticism as a hermit. Despite all that, or perhaps because of all that, he went on to become one of the most celebrated and eloquent preachers in the history of Christianity. So much so that his name in Greek means golden mouthed. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we continue to contemplate the homily as a constituent part of Sunday Mass, this week on the road to Emmaus, I want to introduce you to St. John Chrysostom, the patron saint of preachers. During my student days at the Pontifical North American College in Rome, I would often visit St. Peter's Basilica in order to pray and also to bathe in the beauty of the Renaissance architecture. At the very farthest point of the church's nave, you will find the altar of the chair of Peter. The chair in question is held aloft by four enormous bronze statues, each depicting a great doctor of the church. That's the church's superstar list of the greatest Christian thinkers, preachers, and teachers in history. Hence, if you like, this quartet of bronze saints form part of an exclusive homily hall of fame. From the Western Church, there is St. Ambrose and St. Augustine, who are both wearing mitres. From the Eastern Church, there is St. Athanasius and St. John Chrysostom. St. John was born in the middle of the fourth century in the city of Antioch, which is now in modern-day Turkey. He was raised by his mother, who may have been a Christian, and baptized in his 20s. Already a young man of great learning, he quickly embraced a life of extreme asceticism. Ordination to the diaconate and priesthood soon followed, and then, in the fall of 397, John was appointed Archbishop of Constantinople. By that time, the Roman Empire had been divided into two administrative halves, west and east. The heart of the Eastern Roman Empire was the city of Constantinople. Hence, there were few more significant pulpits from which to preach to the late Roman world, and by the grace of God, St. John didn't disappoint. The Catholic Encyclopedia of 1917 says this, The success of Chrysostom's preaching is chiefly due to his great natural facility of speech, which was extraordinary even to Greeks, to the abundance of his thoughts as well as the popular way of presenting and illustrating them. And last but not least, the wholehearted earnestness and conviction with which he delivered the message which he felt had been given to him. The power of his eloquence is such that it echoes unto this day. In fact, his Paschal homily is still preached every Easter Sunday in those Eastern Rite churches that are in communion with Rome. The text has been described by some as the greatest Easter homily ever written. In it, St. John says this of Christ's resurrection, Hell grasped at a corpse and met God. Hell seized earth and encountered heaven. Hell took what it saw and was overcome by what it could not see. O death, where is your sting? O hell, where is your victory? Hence my challenge to you for this week. Listen to the Paschal homily of John Chrysostom and prayerfully revel in the words of this great golden-mouthed saint. Here's a short film featuring one of our fellow, fellow pilgrims on the road to Emmaus who has been doing just that. Enjoy. He that was held prisoner of his annihilation has annihilated it. By descending into hell, he made hell captive. He embittered it when it tasted his flesh. And Isaiah foretelling this did cry, Hell said he was embittered when it encountered thee in the lower regions. It was embittered for it was abolished. It was embittered for it was mocked. It was embittered for it was slain. It was embittered for it was overthrown. It was embittered for it was fettered in chains. It took a body and met God face to face. It took earth and encountered heaven. It took that which was seen and fell upon the unseen. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, hell, where is your victory? Christ is risen, and you are overthrown. 
Christ is risen, and the demons have fallen. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life reigns. Christ is risen, and not one dead remains in the grave. For Christ, being risen from the dead, has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. To him be glory and dominion unto the ages of ages. Amen. My name is the uh, very Reverend James Bacha, and I am the pastor of St. Michael Byzantine Catholic Church in Flushing, Michigan. St. John Chrysostom, as we know, was the uh, Archbishop of Constantinople. The uh, Pascha, uh, the Pasch, uh, which is in, uh, translated as Passover, we, we are celebrating the glorious resurrection. And so after coming out of 40 days of fasting and prayer and meditation, now is the j greatest joy he was able to captivate people, probably like our Lord did. They would sit for hours listening to him with no problem because that's how motivational he was. I mean, he just set their hearts on fire. It's written in a way that is without time. Okay? So even though it was written centuries ago, it still is significant for us in our modern day. It's like the Gospels. The Gospels, you know, aren't something that was written in the past, that we still live them every, each and every day. So that's how these sermons are, that they are timeless. And so they are just as significant to us in our modern day as they were when they were alive. We should be inflamed and, and, and enlightened, uh, uplifted by this, that he conquered death. You know, what, what greater thing could there be to do and therefore giving us salvation and, and, and freedom from, uh, from evil, freedom from uh, the curse of Adam, you know, and, and so therefore giving us great hope.